we will call the meeting to order. Convening from closed session, I would ask the city attorney to report on it. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. The city council is in closed session this evening on three items. The first is threat to public services or facilities, consultation with the police chief. The second item was conference with real property negotiator regarding 10 properties located in the Old Town area. And the last item was public employee appointment, public works director. And there's no reportable action from any of those items. Thank you, City Attorney. And we'll have the roll call, please. Council Members Powers? Here. Singleton? Here. Shelton? Here. Cruz? Here. Haynes? Here. I would invite you to join me in a moment of silent prayer, and that, and that will be followed by the flag salute by Pack 84, the Bears. Audience, can Attention, will the audience please rise? Color guard event. God's post colors. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, American and just for all. Two. Color guards dismissed. City Clerk will read the video statement. <clears throat> this meeting of the Galt City Council is being videotaped in its entirety and will be cablecast without interruption on Metro Cable 14, the Government Affairs Channel on the Comcast and SureWest cable systems. Tonight's meeting can be seen on Channel 14 and will also be webcast at www.sacmetrocable.tv this Friday and Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. Tonight's meeting can also be seen via live video streaming on the city's website at www.ci.galt.ca.us. It's also available for checkout from any library branch. Members of the audience wishing to address council should fill out a speaker identification form and give it to the clerk. Please speak into the microphone when addressing council and state your name for the record. Okay. <laughs> At this time, I would ask for agenda approval. Are there any additions or deletions? We have okay. Uh, we have no presentation, so we will go to public comment. Okay, under Government Code Section 5495.4.3, members of the public may address the council on non-agenda items. Speakers may address council on agenda items during consideration of the item. Speakers shall restrict their comments to issues that are within the subject jurisdiction of the City Council and limit comments to a maximum of three minutes. Please fill out a speaker sheet located on the table inside the entrances to the council chambers and forward the completed speaker sheet to the city clerk. Okay, Aggie Hanshi. My name is Aggie Hanshi and I'm a member of the Dalt Christian on AG. I'm here tonight to speak on behalf of the senior city of Chicago Center on Monday through Friday. There is an ongoing problem with limited parking on Tuesday and Wednesday due to the flea market. The flea market utilizes all the space for parking in and around parks and rec buildings. The north side of Chicago Center has a parking lot, and that also is taken by the flea market, leaving seniors no parking spaces close to the center. 
For some of our seniors, walking a half block is really far. There are seniors in their 90s and late 80s that are mobile, but some are not. Parks and rent parking lot have 16 unmarked spaces available. The other parking spaces are designated parking. There are four handicaps, two for city employees, four spaces for drivers for meals on wheels, plus two 30 minute parking. Of the 16 unmarked spaces, two to four are used by parks and rec staff leaving a total of 12 to 14 spaces left for seniors. However, on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, these spaces are taken up by people that attend the flea market. This leaves seniors no part. Daily attendance of Meals on Wheels has increased in the past six months. Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays, attendance is usually 40 to 50 people. Tuesdays and Wednesdays, the daily attendance drops anywhere from 15 to 20 people, and it's an average of 80 lunches per month. One solution would be to have reserved parking on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And I figured out how to do that with cash. Using cash, it wouldn't cost the city any money. They could hold the spaces for seniors from 8 a.m. to 11.30, using the parking lot north of Travolta Center, which is on Caroline. They could, cones could be placed at the designated parking areas on Monday evenings and then removed at 11.30 Wednesday. Cats could also uh, police the parking area for parks and red parking lots. The parking lot north of Chabola Center would be an ideal spot for designated parking across the street. Seniors could show their cards or their ID, their driver's license to cats. Cats could have a list it would only include two pages. They could check that name off, and that, that problem could be solved. And so there are approximately 24 seniors in the cows on their cars. We only have four handicap marked spaces. Having reserve parking on the north side of the center would be a big plus for seniors. Thank you for allowing me to bring this problem to your attention. Thank you, Aggie. Thank you, Aggie. Thank you. Okay, Carrie Ann Combs. Good evening. I am Carrie Ann Combs. I am the Mills of Mills coordinator. I've been doing my job about 17 months, approximately. One of my um, primary responsibilities, I was told when I took the position by Mills on Mills, was to increase the numbers. The numbers had initially been 50s, 60s, or 40. When I took over, I had some days with 25 people. Um, in September, I had clients up to 60, and I was out in Poole and very happy. I have gone in conjunction with South County Services, door to door, the senior apartments, the senior mobile home complexes, the flea market, on my own time, the flyers that I had made to increase my population. The problem is when the seniors come, there's no parking. I have seniors in walkers, chains, wheelchairs, some that can barely walk in and don't have DME to get the medical equipment to even do that. I have seniors even in my handicap spot. They can't walk from the handicap spot up to the door. So quite often they take four designated spots, my middle and thumbnail drivers, which are needed. I do not want this taken away. I'm a strong advocate for my seniors. I'm getting their numbers up and I have daily complaints. Terry, I drove around her a lot. I can't find parking. Commonly it's Tuesday and Thursday, but quite often it is other days of the week. We have our parking here. People park up and down the street for whatever. I don't have spots available for my seniors. So the parking lot would be ideal. They can come through the Chabola doors. There is more parking spots. I'm a huge proponent. There's approximately six or seven of us parks and rec employees. I'm the first one to say we should all park on the street or in the parking lot next door. We're able body, we can walk. My seniors should be parking there. Um, I had one senior that's 92 years old, and she came in and said, I missed you, honey. Where did you this last day? She goes, I drove around for 30 minutes, and I couldn't find it. This senior, her meal, only meal, is the meal I serve her. I do my best to give her seconds. I know my seniors that when they come, certain ones because of their income under $500, this is their only need. 
and when we stay on this two days, you can see me for two days, and I feel guilty. I feel very guilty that there is no sauce pricing. So I just want to bring the numbers up to Evan Lake the Park. They've been offered South County services. Sometimes they qualify if they drive. I told them, I'm sure it's true, Mary Lou, that they don't qualify. I give them a carpool. They don't want to stay late for bingo or they have to, up to do doctor's appointments. But I feel guilty if they don't have a place to start. I have my numbers up. It's that I'm for 40. I'm 42 people today, and 25 showed up. It's a parking issue. And I really hope the city takes this seriously because I do it to get part of the I need mean today. I need mean yesterday. Your time's up. So, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Can we look into that? I think it's really important, and I'm, you know, they, they need places to park that's close by where the food is. Yeah, this is, I, this is the first I've heard of yeah. any yeah, issues. Yeah, me too, so but... We'll start again to different options. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That's all the speakers. Okay. Uh, we will go to the consent calendar. Is there uh, any questions or comments? If not, I would entertain a motion to approve. <laughs> Red first. I'm sorry. Mayor, could we get those red first? Okay. Just for the record. Thank you. Okay, we have five items tonight. The first one, approval of the minutes of the special and regular meetings of January 17th, 2012, and the special meetings of January 24th, 2012. Number two, approval of the City of Galt Warrants. Number three, crack sealer purchase. Number four, public work works agreement with Coastline Civil Engineering, amendment number two. And number five, award of Walker Community Park Bleachers Project to Sirocco and Sons. Are there any questions or comments? Then I would entertain a motion. Move to accept. Second. We have a first and a second. Roll call vote, please. Councilman Powers? Aye. Councilman Singleton? Aye. Councilman Shelton? Aye. Councilman Cruz? Aye. Mayor Payne? Aye. Motion passed unanimously. Next item, please. Next item is a scheduled matters public hearing for utility service rates 2012. Mm. Madam Mayor, members of the council, um, I'm trying out a new microphone. I guess it's working okay. Mm -hmm. um, It'll be better once it's done. And uh, who's come on by itself? Or do I need to do something here too? I'm sorry. I do have a PowerPoint presentation. And. Um, uh, Wait for the countdown first. Is it is it ready to go? Yeah, I'm, it's, it's up here. It's, it's counting down. Yeah. Oh, it's still doing it. Okay, thank you. Sorry for the technical difficulties. It will take a minute. I did hand out copies of the presentation for you, and there are several of them in the audience and in the, in the boxes as well. I wanted to uh, kind of go over a few things, but I'm going to start by telling you what we're really talking about, and that is the the overall utility rate uh, adjustments that the city makes annually. We're looking at uh, a few state increases and one large decrease for a net decrease of 81 cents a month for uh, those residents in the Tier 2 storm drain area and about a dollar for everybody else. Um, and of course, the commercial rates for other, other uh, uses are proportional to that. Uh, so that's kind of where, where, we're, where we're headed with this. Um, but I did want to go through a few things to give you the background on that. And presentation really is, uh, I'm going to go through it pretty quickly, uh, just some general issues and then the, the four utilities. And then I'll, I want to go through the, uh, the recap uh, of what we had in the public meeting that we held a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so you hear what the comments were for those who couldn't be here tonight. And then time to take your questions and discussion and whatever action you want to do. So you've heard about this before, you know, to run a utility, you've got all the cost things that any bit has. Uh, and I'm not going to go through these in detail, but I wanted to point out a couple things, particularly in the wastewater side. When you look at them and look at rates, you think us, but you really, to understand that, you have to know what's going on with the utility. And golf has some unique factors that I, I wanted to point out. Probably one of the most significant in the wastewater side is that all the wastewater in town is pumped to the treatment plant probably twice, in some cases three and four times. That is a significant cost that a lot of cities still have. So those are the kind of things that you really look at when you're going into evaluating your rates, and, and, and particularly when you're comparing rates to other agencies. Um, and of course, the other things, the uh, debt service is going to vary from agency to agency, what they have to do, have done in the past. 
and everybody needs to look at what they have in the way of maintaining and establishing your reserves. Uh, the goals for doing rates uh, are really pretty simple uh, for utilities within a city. Those utility funds need to be self-sustaining. They don't get support from the general fund. In fact, they pay the general fund for the cost of providing finance services, um, building maintenance, all those are the kind of things that, that again, any business would have uh, as part of a, uh, uh, their operations. The, um, uh, another issue with, with rates is to make sure you're charging the different users in an equitable manner. And that is established through a periodic uh, analysis of your rate structure. What is the relationship between what a single family home pays and what a commercial establishment pays? Uh, we didn't get into that in, in this, this round of rate adjustments. We've done what the city's done in the past uh, for several years is look at uh, an inflationary cost uh, increase. And uh, periodically, five, six years or so, you, you do this kind of an analysis. And I think the last one was done here in 2008. Um, and again, the difference in service demand and charge accordingly. Those are the, how you accomplish this, this goal, if you want to call it that. Uh, another goal that I've always been, been taught is you, you look at trying to avoid large fluctuation, fluctuations. Uh, nobody likes to see a huge increase in any rate structure. It doesn't make the public happy, which means the, if you aren't happy, you know, I'm not happy, and, and so we, we try to avoid that. Um, and how you do that is you maintain reserves, so you can carry yourself through times when you've got a big project to deal with or revenue dips for whatever reason, you can, can, can live through that. Or you have an unforeseen circumstance that comes up, and I'll talk more about reserves in a minute. The way to help avoid that is you keep tweaking a little bit every year so you don't get too far behind and, and go 10, 12 years without adjusting your rates and then find out, geez, you really got to raise them a whole bunch to catch up. But bottom line is to keep rates as low as possible consistent with all existing goals. And, and that's, that's what we're trying to do. So I mentioned this annual inflationary adjustment. The city has adopted a, uh, a practice in the last several years of using the consumer price index. Um, which is, again, a measure of, of the cost of urban, urban consumers. And, and I'm going to come back to that point also based on one of the comments we had at the, uh, at the public meeting. So we started that a while back. We used the uh, uh, Western Urban Regional Area CTI. There are several consumer price indexes out there. Um, and uh, uh, the city had adopted this one. And it is important to stay consistent with the one you've picked. You keep bouncing around, and it's not, you're not going to have a consistent you know, adjustments. Last year that, that uh, oh, I should point out that that does have to keep up operating costs, but it doesn't always account for your capital needs. Because again, capital projects tend to come in big lumps. And, and so you, you plan for that with, in a little longer range view, and I'll show you an example of that in a minute. Uh, last year the CPI change was 3.4%, um, and that's what we're recommending for uh, two of the utilities. The uh, rate notification that was done as part of the 218 process uh, includes that we would do future adjustments based on the CPI in the absence of any better information. The bottom line is, according to, to uh, state law, is that you can't charge more than the cost of service. And, and that gets back to that periodic you know, evaluation you do of rates uh, to make sure you are charging appropriate service. What this would do is, is allow you to go ahead and do the PI for up to five years um, without doing a formal rate study and uh, without doing uh, a full 218 notice. You still have to provide public notification of changing the rates. We don't need to do the full 218 majority protest process, which would save the city a fair amount of money in avoiding that extra, extra step. Uh, so let's jump into storm drainage. Um, this is a pretty straightforward issue. You have a two-tiered rate structure that's been in place for many years. And uh, new, de new development is, is in the Tier 2. The older part of town um, is in Tier 1. Tier 1 needs to be adjusted with the vote of the people because it's the way that the law works on that. And um, when people join Tier 2, new development joins Tier 2, they, uh, they agree as part of the process that, that we can use a, a CPI increase going forward. So that's what we're recommending for Tier 2. In water, there's... Um, Really no significant changes, and I want to underline the word significant changes in what we've seen in the last year. So we are also recommending that, that we use the CPI adjustment for, for this coming year. But I do want to point out there are some long-term 
concerns about arsenic and, and water meters. That uh, mm -hmm. uh, I know you've adapted the phase one uh, program for getting the water meters in. I'll come back to that also in a minute. But the uh, long term, the rest of the water meters that need to go in by 2026, 20, whatever it is, um, and arsenic treatment. Um, I, I know we've started work on the arsenic, but we're not done with that yet. And uh, that could be a trigger that leads to having to do a m larger than uh, a CPI increase. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Our race is a little more involved this year. Um, there was an issue with the uh, 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 green waste disposal that uh, the long-term uh, place that it was being hauled to closed uh, their operation. And the city worked with the uh, franchisee, uh, California Waste Recovery Systems, to uh, on some alternatives. If you've been aware of that, um, there was a cost associated with all that. And uh, the company has agreed to face that out over the next three years. Um, but there, again, there is a cost associated with that. And that uh, is reflected in the adjustment down below that I'll go through. Um, the franchise agreement that you have with Cal Waste doesn't use the consumer price index. It uses a series of, of indices based on certain components of their, of their costs. Um, I have to tell you that when I met with them to talk about this, I asked them if they could have found a more complicated formula to do this. <laughs> and, and they said, well, it came from the city's consultant, so I had to be quiet. Um, but it, 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 and the issue will come back up in, the, in response to one of the comments we had at the public meeting. But um, uh, overall, we're talking about a 5% increase, uh, a, a big piece of that. Um, was about a percent worth of the, uh, the green waste disposal. The other component is the landfill cost the, um, that is taken to the North County landfill, and they have an automatic increase every year based on the a different index. So that um, is just just cranked in automatically, and our franchise agreement reflects that, and basically that share is is cranked in. Uh, the larger component is just overall operating costs. So again, as I mentioned, 5.19 percent, about $1.20 a month. Well, $1.20 a month for a single-family home. Wastewater. This is where we had all the fun. Um, staff is recommending that we combine the the two uh, charges you currently have in place. You you have a an operations and maintenance charge, or the basic service charge that you've had for many years, and then several years ago you you uh, added a separate line item on the bill for the uh, treatment plant upgrade costs. And uh, that was implemented. I, I'm sorry, I don't recall what year it was, but it, it did go back several years. Uh, and it's, that number has kind of bounced around uh, because the project overall did come in less than what we had, had counted on. Um, but we are suggesting that we no longer maintain that separate charge. And the reasons are that you know, regulatory requirements aren't static. Well, wastewater permits for discharge are issued on a five year cycle. Because of the time it takes to actually get a permit, it may go a little bit longer, five, uh, six years, maybe even seven. Uh, but still, it may change all the time. Uh, and they rarely go less burdensome. There, there's always new revision. Uh, part of the permit process is that you have to do certain studies. The results of those studies are considered in the permit renewal. And they can often result in another discharge requirement. Uh, Right now, we have in our new permit um, a nitrogen and arsenic limit that still is going to require about $6 million in the next few years. And that has to be done, and I mean done, completed, optional by 2015. So we don't have a whole lot of time to get that done. Um, as I mentioned, upgrades are, you know, they're always a work in progress. The, the regional board finds a lot of about things that they want mm -hmm. considered, they want evaluated, and they can, can wind up in additional improvement costs, um, or operating costs for that matter. Um, one of the things that uh, in the past in terms of dealing with this, this separate upgrade chart was that it, they were trying to capture, the city was trying to capture not only the ca capital costs, but the operating costs of the tertiary upgrades that occurred or well, were completed last year. Um, that is very difficult to do in a consistent and, and rational manner because there's too many things that are back and forth at that plant that you can't really say this is just that. It's a combined operation. And as you go forward, when you build this work, what's that going to do to what's existing? Um, it, it's trying to maintain a distinction that we didn't think was reasonable as going forward. 
But we have an alternative. We know this, that was a controversial item that would be, would be, uh, you know, proposing that would be controversial. And so we have an alternative that I'll describe in a few minutes. Um, we are recommending that feature increases like the other, you know, be done based on the CPI. Um, and the methodology that we use, because we're actually looking at reducing the rates, because I mentioned earlier that budget costs uh, from that grade came a little lower than we counted on. And so we, we recognize that we can reduce the rates. So we get a little more uh, look at this than we did on the other utilities because of that factor. Um, so we look forward to fiscal year 14-15 to pick up that project that I mentioned before. Um, we assume no customer growth, which is a conservative assumption. I know we have the Walmart project coming in, you know, when it actually happens, and will happen in this fiscal year or, or later. Um, I don't know. Um, we did keep, we have a debt service now from the uh, upgrade project that is a fixed amount. And when we did our projections forward, we kept that amount fixed. And I'll actually show you that calculation in a minute. Because um, there was concern, in fact, in the public's part, we had a public meeting that, that we're somehow double dipping on that. And I, I, we really did factor that out. Um, we have the capital projects I mentioned before. And we included a reserve goal. Uh, my understanding is the general fund has a reserve policy. It's not specifically uh, applicable to the, to the utilities. And so we're suggesting that we, we ought to at least have a target that we look at. And um, based on my review, I mean, you know, we, we have a goal of $27 million. That's a combination of operating and capital reserves. And I'll tell you in a minute, <laughs> we're down at the end of that cycle at about $2.2 million, which, and, and the balance is probably going to rise in the, in the following year because we are showing higher income and expenses so, uh, by a sl small amount. So that is comfortable, uh, in, in my opinion. Um, this is the, a, a very shrunken version of the analysis that you have in the staff report. Um, I wanted to point out just a couple of things. I'm not going to go through all these numbers unless you have a question about them. But we start off with you know, actual figures for these various categories of, of operations and capital. Um, separate rate revenue from other revenue so that when you apply a factor uh, for whether it's representing CPI or in this case, you know, minus 6.5% rate reduction this year, the rate revenue. Uh, keep track of CIP versus operations. And I wanted to highlight in operations in fiscal year 10-11, this was the cost of operations for the entire utility, just under $2 million. In 11-12, we now have the debt service from the upgrade project, which is just a little over a million dollars a year. So that, that explains that big jump. But I wanted to point out that when we did the, the projection to the next year, this, and this is the cost escalation factors we use, the 3.0% CPI that we're applying on the, on the other, other utilities. And uh, this is not a 3.4% jump. It's only about 2.2%. So it, it shows you that, that we did factor out the debt service in doing the increase. So we weren't, we weren't increasing the cost by an inflationary factor on that, thick, that large fixed, fixed cost item. The bottom line is at the end of this, this period, we're looking at about a half a million dollars worth of uh, revenue exceeding expenses. So we're, we're, we're out of these negative numbers we have in, the, in these two years. Bottom line fund balance is at $2.2 million and the recommended reserve based on 25% of operating costs and $2 million of, of your capital reserve is a little greater than that. Um, so we're on the right path. We're not at the target we'd I mean, like to be at, but it's, it's still reasonable, and again, it's, it's, we're in the right direction. Um, public meeting. We held a public meeting at the police community room uh, a few weeks ago uh, on January 24th, a number of questions, and I started with, with the one that I, I actually thought was, was pretty perceptive. Um, somebody asked, is the CPI the best index to use for a water or a wastewater utility? And, and I really had to point out that, well, maybe not. Um, there are literally thousands of indexes that the Bureau of Labor the BLS, um, uh, puts out there. You can get an index for rock salt. So uh, there's others to look at. Um, we could go with a combination of, of uh, indices for various components of our costs and make it a much more complicated process. Uh, I, I don't know how much time and effort uh, Cal Waste puts into coming up with their, with their 
rate uh, request for adjustments. <coughs> but I know it takes the city a lot more time to review it than it would be if it was a CPI. Um, there's another index called the Producer Price Index, which is really meant towards companies that, that produce things. Obviously, it's the name. Uh, it does take into account the cost of capital equipment, which is I thought was interesting. And, and, and I know uh, some of the components of the waste uh, formula use one of the PPIs. It's, there are, as I said, there's lots of sub indices under these various broad categories, and they use a few of the components. There was one for vehicle repair, for example, another index. Um, so we looked at that, and gosh, it was 5.9% for the last year. So I thought public probably wouldn't like that one too well. So um, I did want to point out to the person who commented that we did look at it. Um, so, you know, because we have to go, we can't go more than five years anyway, um, we are comfortable continuing with the CPI. Somebody asked about the solid waste transfer station project. Um, uh, and I, I read about it when I was working in Lodi, but I, I didn't uh, get too involved in it. So I don't know what all the issues were, but obviously they did not find a site in the city. And I just really, it was pretty obvious to me that an investment like that, you've only really got three, I think, three or four years left on the franchise agreement, it's really not practical to look at doing a major capital investment unless you were to open up the contract and negotiate a long extension and all that, which you could consider doing, but um, that's not for tonight. The water meter installation project, was a question about that, and there was, uh, you know, obviously the council has adopted the phase one project. We've got money in the budget. It's been delayed uh, with the various turnover issues in public works, and, and it just hasn't happened. We've, we've tried to get it started. Uh, I anticipate some progress in 2012, uh, but we're not there yet, and I do apologize for that. Uh, somebody asked, well, is the CPI adjustment a tax? And, and, and the answer is no, it's not. Um, it is applied to the rates, as we talked about, to keep up with ongoing costs. And um, we do have to maintain that overall cap of not exceeding our, our, our costs. And um, that is something we need to do, certainly at a, at a five year cycle, um, but really with an analysis like what we did for the wastewater, that can be done more often. And the uh, point about the, the comment was that the debt service should not be increased based on the CPI, and we agree with that. And I also showed you the example, of, or well, the actual calculations that we did that shows that we did not do that. Um, however, there, because there's some sentiment now, I think that some of the members of the public really want to see that item on the bill, um, and we met with some members of, of, of the uh, folks who were really questioning that outside of the public meeting, and we talked about an alternative that would um, uh, look at just the debt service. And let me, um, where we did not consider the operating costs, just the debt service. The debt, we know, well, we, we almost know what it is. It hasn't given us the final numbers, but it's, it's going to be about $1.12 million, um, within a few thousand of that, I'm sure. Um, so we could take that fixed amount and, and create, uh, uh, come up with a number that represents how much we would need to collect that $1.12 million a year subtract that from the total rate that we've recommended already and, and keep that as a line item on the bill. It would stay fixed uh, for the life of the loan, which is going up to like 2030. Um, so, well, yeah, it's 2030. So, um, and at that point it would go away when the loan's paid off. Um, there's a little wrinkle in that because in theory if you get more customers, your revenue, we were paying that, your yield will increase. So you'd have a choice at some point of either lowering the fee a little bit um, or you could let it build up to a reserve point where you could say, okay, we've got enough on the bank to pay off the rest of the loan payments, we'll stop it early. So you'd have to make a decision at some point as to how to handle that. Uh, the amount per, per residence is about $11. And in terms of our recommendation, we do think that going with the combined rate is, is simpler in the long run, um, but the alternative is a workable solution. We have some concerns we wanted to point it out to you so that, you know, if you want to consider it, you, you're aware of these. As I mentioned, it, it's, the thought is it would be a fixed amount, but it would wind up changing over time. There's going to be some confusion in the future um, as how you handle other changes and roll it in with that. 
um, or not roll it in, or do you create a third one if you a third line item if you do another financing 10, 15 years from now? Um, and it's really the third point here is that you know it's based on a concern that we're somehow going to double count it. And uh, we've demonstrated that we can we can factor that out when we do the increase based on a on a CPI, but you know, I think members of the public just felt more comfortable it was kept separate. Um, again, mathematically we can make it the same. Um, so you know, staff but I we just wanted to point out there'll be some issues to wrestle with in the future that, that you'll have to do. So with that we're back at uh, where I started. Um, and uh, um, I know that in terms of the, the alternative, your, your council packet has a table that has both the, the recommended adjustments and the, the alternately called it. I should probably look at it myself now that I. Um, so uh, if you make, when you make a decision on, on the resolution, we you know ask to specify which of the two you want to want to go with. So with that, questions, comments. The alternative is Exhibit 4A. Have we taken uh, comments from the uh, public first before we do anything with this? I think we'll open the public hearing okay. at this point. So we will open the public hearing. Are there, is there anyone that uh, would like to comment at this time? Do you have any no speaker sheets? No. Yeah, into the floor. Hey, uh, okay, last call. Uh, city manager, did you have something to say? Okay, then. Not uh, aware that we received any written yeah. protests. Um, after you close the public hearing. Then I'm, I'm closing the public hearing. Yeah, just for the record, we did receive three written protests. Okay. Do you need to read those? Or, or do we need to read those? Um, no, we don't need to read them. I just, it's obvious that uh, three protests is not a majority protest. So the council will then be free to uh, move ahead with the rate adjustments as you so desire tonight. Can I uh, something there? Certainly. I, uh, I was looking at the uh, the alternative for the WTP, and I uh, I would suggest we stick with the alternative. Uh, it shows more transparency to the public. I would agree. Uh, um, I think that they uh, would be better for informed to keep that extra line. That's just my comment, and my uh, my suggestion to council. Any other comments? I. Here, Councilman Cruz, in supporting. Absolutely. I don't know if Jason has any. No, I think the all, like uh, Richard mentioned, staff is okay with the alternate. We think it's a reasonable alternative. Um, express some of the concerns, but they're not major concerns. So right. certainly, Council's free to adopt that uh, alternative. That's why we presented in this manner, actually, as a, a separate exhibit or to, uh, exhibit 4A on there, which makes it easy the Council wants to go in that direction. Okay. I had a comment. I don't know if you were making this just a statement or would you kind of made it in a motion? That well, I was, I was waiting asking. to see if we had anything to discuss, but I would like to make that a motion if I could get a second. Two seconds, sir. Okay. Can we repeat the motion? Uh, to uh, council to uh, approve the uh, the upgrade fee uh, alternative, as mentioned in the. Uh, uh, Agenda item. It would be to adopt the resolution approving all the rate adjustments with the wastewater treatment plant, um, having the 4A, which is the, the alternate uh, rate right. schedule. That's Thank you. Did you get that, Lee Clark? <laughs> okay, you've heard the motion. Was there a second? Uh, excuse me. Can I just have a clarification? If you look at the resolution, it references exhibit all of those exhibits um, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 4A. Mm -hmm. Um, which ones? So, oh. take them so which, I don't think it needs to be separate. But is any is there any change, Richard, to to the uh, reference to the exhibits? 
it'd probably be the best if we adopted a resolution uh, to include exhibits one, two, three, and four A. So strike four. Right. Okay. And four A. One, two, three, and four A. Thank you. So uh, the, I guess the motion would be to adopt the resolution as as just amended. Are you okay with that? You wish to amend that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. We have a first and a second. Any other dissents or questions? If not, I'll call for the vote. Vice Mayor Powers? Uh, aye. Councilmember Singleton? Aye. Councilmember Shelton? Aye. Councilmember Cruz? Aye. Mayor Payne? Aye. Motion passed unanimously. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the report. Move on to the regular. Yeah, next item uh, under the regular town number one, strategic plan by Mayor Payne. Okay. Since the last council meeting, the uh, the city council met and uh, reviewed their their goals um, and decided to try to combine instead of having five goals, we combined three so that we could focus. Um, a little more clearly and easel, easier for the staff to focus on. Um, these are online. I'm not going to go over them all tonight. I will mention that uh, one of the three-year goals, enhance economic development. We have coming up uh, February 21st as the completion date to ensure completion of environmental and infrastructures to prepare the Simmerhorn commercial property for development. Um, also coming up soon, which we will be reviewing next month, is to conduct a feasibility study to determine the viability of an entertainment complex in Old Town and present the results to the City Council. The other goal that we kept was improve financial stability and maintenance of reserves. In uh, March, we will have from the finance director to develop and distribute an RFP for a comprehensive fee study with the cost of the consultant to be included in the 2012-13 budget. Along with that, we will also identify and recommend the city council for action new fees, if any, to be charged by the city. The other goal, the third goal, was to engage the community and provide services and facilities responsive to community needs. Uh, beginning February 5th, 2012, Public Works Director and Special Projects Administrators opened to the general public the artificial turf field at Walker Park on Sundays. And I believe we have done that publicly, City Manager. Okay, uh, also coming up, there will be a state of the city address to be made to the Chamber of Commerce. And with that, we will move on and we will report back to the public and to the council monthly on all of our goals and how we're moving along with them. If there's no questions, we'll move to the next item. Okay, next item under City Attorney's Office, an ordinance amending Chapter 3.32 of the Galt Municipal Code to eliminate a credit against the payment of taxes payable to the redevelopment agency. Uh, good evening again, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, until uh, January 24th, there was a provision in the Municipal Code under the sales and use tax uh, provisions that provided a credit against taxes due and payable to the redevelopment agency. In anticipation of the uh, elimination of the redevelopment agency, the City Council e eliminated that provision of the Galt Municipal Code by an urgency ordinance on January 24th. I think that it's always good practice as time passes after the Council has adopted an, ur an urgency ordinance to come back and adopt the same provision by way of a regular, uh, by way of the regular process. So that's what is uh, before you this evening. It would be to uh, introduce an ordinance, amending Chapter 3.32 of the Gold Municipal Code, to eliminate a credit against the payment of taxable development agency and repealing Ordinance Number 8911. Uh, waive the full reading of the ordinance and continue the matter to the next regular meeting of the City Council. 
So um, that's the recommended action. I'd be happy to respond to any questions. Are there any questions? You uh, heard the recommendation. I move we accept recommendations to staff. I'll second. We have first and second. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Powers. Aye. Councilmember Singleton. Aye. Councilmember Shelton. Aye. Councilmember Cruz. Aye. Mayor Payne. Aye. Motion passed unanimously. Next item, please. Next item. A resolution approving the purchase and sale agreements with multiple owners for the acquisition of nine parcels in the Gulf Old Town area and authorizing the city manager to execute and implement the agreement. Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the City Council. My pleasure to present this report to you this evening. This has been a project we've been working on for many months. We got delayed last summer when the Supreme Court issued its stay on all redevelopment activities. The uh, issue was decided earlier this year. And as, as part of that, the city has now become successor agency to the redevelopment agency. Um, and under as a successor agency, we're allowed to proceed with uh, previous projects authorized by the redevelopment agency, including proceeding with um, projects associated with previously issued bond proceeds. Um, we have identified uh, for you this evening nine properties the city or the uh, uh, city wishes to purchase as part of the Old Town revitalization project that we've been working on for, for several years down in the Old Town. This will continue the city's efforts in hopes of attracting additional uh, entertainment, retail, restaurant opportunities for that part of our community. The total cost of the identified projects is approximately $1.2 million. Um, as part of being a successor agency, there is a new requirement that uh, all activities or all actions taken by the successor agency requires an oversight committee approval. Oversight committee has not yet been formed. We anticipate it being formed within the next month or so. We'll probably be coming back to the council. There's two appointments that need to be made by the mayor. Those will likely happen in the next meeting. We've been in touch with other tax entities and they also are moving forward with, uh, with their appointments. So hopefully in March We'll be ready to, to move forward. So the way agreements are written is it does require the approval committee so the, the properties will not close until such time as the oversight review and approve those. If the oversight committee does not approve them, then the, the city would not be um, allowed to proceed with the purchase of those properties. Again, the funding for the purchase comes from bond proceeds that were issued last year. This was one of the original intents of those bond, bond proceeds. And uh, with that, happy to answer any council questions. The recommendation uh, in front of you this evening is that the council, as the successor agency to the Gall Redevelopment Agency, adopt the resolution approving the purchase and sale agreements with multiple owners for the acquisition of nine parcels in Gall Old Town area and authorizing the city manager to execute and implement the agreements subject to approval of the oversight committee. Okay. Are there any questions or comments from the city council members? I have one. Is the Oversight Committee the last to uh, review? It doesn't require any other authorization or approval. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Council, you've heard the recommendation. Is there, is there no other questions? Is there a motion? The motion we approve as stated in the agenda. Second. Thank you. We have a first and a second. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Powers? Aye. Councilmember Singleton? Aye. Councilmember Cruz? Aye. Mayor Payne? Aye. Motion passed unanimously. Next item, please. Next item, rental of Shibola and Littleton Community Centers to resident nonprofit organizations. Okay, the last council meeting, council directed staff to return with a resolution that would allow local nonprofits to rent the Littleton and Shibola centers at no cost. As what we have uh, returned to you this evening to present. Uh, one of the other recommendations was that it would be a one-year trial period with the requirement that the groups pay $150 cleaning deposit. If they didn't leave the facility in good shape, then we would be able to keep that and use that for cleaning. Um, staff did a little research to give the council some additional information about um, how many times nonprofit groups used and rented the facility over the last in 2011. Um, 16 times in 2011, Littleton Center was rented to local nonprofit groups. Total revenue the city received was $5,890. Uh, we did not allow the rental of Shibola Center previously, so that's why there's no rental income from that facility. 
Uh, in addition, it was rented out six times to private private parties uh, for a total of three thousand seven hundred ninety dollars. Uh, one of staff's concerns is that if nonprofits use the facilities more than they are now, then that might um, squeeze out some of the private parties, in which case we would lose additional revenue. It's unclear exactly how much revenue loss we anticipate up up to about $8,000 is the revenue loss for a given year. Uh, we do have some additional recommendations for the Council's consideration this evening um, when staff has had an opportunity to review this. Uh, if there is additional use of the facilities, that would mean additional wear and tear on our equipment, our chairs, our tables, other things that would, would be required to be replaced sooner. In addition, it requires right now staff is involved in setting up the tables and chairs, taking down the tables and chairs, mopping the floor, taking up the, and there's significant cost involved in that. In addition, there's the, the heat light and power costs associated with that. So in order to minimize, since we're not getting any revenue in, in order to minimize the city's cost, staff recommends that we put some requirements on the nonprofits that they perform some of their own setup, take down, clean up afterwards, um, and that way we would have minimal impact. And if a group didn't do that, then we would be able to retain that. And I would suggest if, if a group does that more than once, then we would have the ability to not let to them in the future at $0. Um, in addition, we would recommend that we limit the number of times any one group can rent the facilities at zero, zero dollars for any given year. Right now, if you don't put any restrictions on it, it, it's conceivable that a group could rent it every day of the week, right. every Wednesday night, every Sunday afternoon. Um, a church group could set up, you know, and have their, their church their church meetings there every Sunday. Right. Um, and that would limit certainly access to other groups, and, and it would certainly speed up the wear and tear on our facilities. And so we would recommend um, putting a maximum cap the um, two times a year, and the council certainly can debate and discuss how many times that we would li that we would recommend having a maximum number of times per year per group. Um, and the resolution that's in front of you right now includes the uh, everything that I've stated, which is zero dollar rent for local nonprofit groups, uh, one hundred fifty dollar cleaning deposit. It also includes the language that would require groups to take down and clean up. It does not in here right now have um, any language about limiting the number of times a group wants to use it. So once you have that discussion and decide, then I will suggest appropriate language um, to put in here if the council wants to go in that direction. Okay. The city attorney's view. And I think that one other uh, uh, potential amendment to the resolution is in the staff report, there's a definition of resident nonprofit organization. That term is used in the resolution. So it would be my uh, recommendation that you take a look at that definition, and if you're comfortable with it, that we add that definition into the resolution. Would you mind reading that definition, please? Sure. A definition of a resident nonprofit organization is as follows. Organizations located within the city of Galt and organized primarily for charitable, religious, educational, athletic, veteran, patriotic welfare, civic betterment, or similar purpose. Such organizations shall have a principal meeting place within the city of Galt and shall have been organized and established for a minimum of one year continuously preceding the filing of a rental request and shall have a bona fide membership of at least 20 Galt resi residents over the age of 18 years. Now the reason we came up with that definition is we did not want to utilize just 501c3 uh, designation because that's, that's very technical. And so we wanted to have it uh, to a broader group of organizations, but we wanted those organizations to be legitimate, which is why uh, we added uh, as a proposal to the definition that they uh, be organizations from Galt, they have a meeting place within Galt, they've been in place for, uh, for a year, and that they have, uh, have uh, 20, 20 members. So any of that is, certainly could be changed at your discretion, but that's the uh, proposed definition we came up with. Okay. Uh, we've asked the staff to um, bring forward their recommendations. You've heard them. You've heard some um, suggestions. So I would now turn to the council for your questions or thoughts. Quick Councilman question. Cruz? Quick question. You're saying within the city of Galt, correct? Mm -hmm except we have one high school just outside the city limits. How would they be affected? 
Well, they they would not uh, they would not be covered if you, if you use this definition. So Our high schools covered under use so agreement. We have a, a okay. So we have someone the covering them. Yeah, that would be important. Yeah. We have a, a facility use agreement with both school districts that allow us to use their facilities, them to use our facilities at no cost. That's okay. always been covered. Well, additional, I think we should increase from two to three per, per group per annual per year. And I was so going to recommend the same reason. Maximum what did you three. say? I didn't hear you. There was a little bit of buzzing going on up there. What did you say? A max, instead of two, max it out at three per group per year. I think that's too much. I was only thinking of one if we're only giving. And, I don't, and the only reason is we're doing it on a one year trial period and they have to give a six months notice so you know I, I wouldn't want the same group coming in for two I think three is too much personally and the other thing I have an issue with is um, I don't you know I don't like the um, 20 you have to have 20 in your organization because some of the organizations are smaller so yeah, like I would agree with her on that also. What was the number? The yeah, number we have on there is 20. Um, I, I don't know why we have to have a requirement of 20. Uh, yeah, I don't think we have to have that. And, uh, you know, um, I think knowing that they're uh, organized and established, there's, there's a lot that comes with being a, a nonprofit. You've got to have a board of directors. You have to have an uh, incorporation. Right. You have to have a lot of things. So I think to say they have to have 20 members. I think that's like I said, I know. Too, too high if we have to have a number in there. I, really I don't do. think we need a number in there. No, I, I don't. I Ms. Singleton, would you like to make a comment? I'm just agreeing with her. <laughs> now. <laughs> I'm going along with the discussion. I'm agreeing with her. And and to Mr. Cruz, uh, I agree. Uh, uh, where she's not going to agree with me. I do think the three would be enough. Now, the the other thing that goes along with that is if we have two nonprofit agencies. Uh, bid for the same day uh, on that. Uh, are we going to go by filing date? Who files first? Is that so the person who first gets come first serve? Okay, no. yep. okay, because you know that could happen, and then we can review that in a year and see uh, how we've done with the the uh, nonprofits, and and uh, if we've had any issues, we need to iron out. Uh, but I mean, I, I don't know why we'd have a problem with uh, three times a year. I really don't. Well, if I understand your numbers correctly, there were only 16 times during the previous year where it was used, correct? That's when it wasn't. I mean, that's when we charged them. So right. if you don't charge, you may have more. Are likely to go well, I think you'll have a lot more, and I, that's why I think that I almost thought two was too much. Mm -hmm. To start off with free, one big event in your organization, you know, it is going to be a lot on Parks and Rec, and um, we have, we, we're giving it an initial, but three times, no. Not in my book. I mean, that's just the way I feel. Three times is uh, a lot. Councilman Shelton, do you have I'm a good with, I'm good with no more than two. Okay. You know, but I have a question. Uh, okay. You came up about uh, for someone to reserve one of the uh, centers uh, six months in it, or maximum of six months out. Yeah, that was one of the recommendations. Right now, you could reserve one of our facilities up to a year in advance. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. Um, and so what okay. recommendations was, for the, if you want it for free, then you can't reserve it a full year in advance. You can only do it six months in advance. That way, right. you're not taking the space of somebody else that's paying and wants to do it further in advance. So okay. you wouldn't have maybe the prime dates. If you get right. it for free, you're flexible. And so that sure. was the thought sure. process. All right. sure. And I, I also like the part of the uh, the organizations need to do some of the work since mm -hmm. they're getting the hall of setting up the tables up. You know, sometimes we don't think as far as staff does, and I really um, like that part about setting up the tables and cleaning the place when you're done. And that was my intent when I brought that up about the cleaning deposit. Yeah. Those organizations would do the setup, okay. and they would sweep and clean and mop as long as we have that. You know, the, everything there for them. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, we have probably have a checklist yep. given That's to them to saying here's what you have to do so and here's where everything will be. Maybe located. have it posted. Yeah, we'll have well. it posted and as part of the rental, we'll give a copy of them in right. advance and we'll probably, the little janitor's closet, we'll have it on the inside of the door so they can go through the checklist, mm -hmm. things they have right. to do. Fair enough. I have a question too. Um, and th these will only be available around the um, a athletic schedule, right? Mm -hmm. Because I know we have basketball in both. Yeah, our facilities and they will. The rule is that our programs would have preference. So if there's a 
City Tots preschool event or a basketball program or the seniors have something going on that they, we would mark those out on the calendar okay. in advance so they couldn't book over those. But any other dates that weren't being used by our program, then they could fill those in. Okay. Yeah. Do we know how many there, know. there are? How many? Oh, quite a few. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's then if we're going to let some organizations do too and there's not that many spaces left. True. You know, so there are quite a few. Yeah. It's a, More it's questions. Easy schedule follow up to what Jason said. Okay. What are the months that, uh, bat, like basketball's over, that's the big one I think, but yeah. does it start like about March to like September? Is, uh, we don't have as many months. There. Basketball is um, like November to yeah. March, I yeah. think. Okay, sometime in March. Yeah, yeah, that's when that ends. So and middle then, March. And the senior programs go year round and the, little, the uh, <coughs> City Tots program goes from September through you know, the end of May, um, but they're not used in the evening a lot, so if a group wanted to have a fundraiser or a dinner yeah. at night, we don't use that, the facilities as much in the evening, so those, you know, most, of the, most of the days are pretty booked. Mm -hmm. Evenings are not so much unless there's some special things going on. Uh, I'm going to allow someone from the audience to come up and make a comment to Carrie. It's probably highly unusual and not appropriate. No. I didn't realize this was voted on last month. My bosses, uh, Monica and Armando, came over and asked me what about the kitchen being used this year. And I was just sort of in my kitchen because I didn't want to talk. Um, something they weren't aware of, and I've since found out from my Mills on Wheels coordinator, I have a huge um, retherm of it. I'm going to get a five to eight thousand dollars. It's got a very good flex. It is on wheels, but it's far too heavy for me to move. Every event that the kitchen is used in Chibola, that has to be moved out because the city is not responsible for it, nor park and rec. And actually maintenance has to move it out, move it into the locked room, and move it back before 9 o'clock every morning. And I don't know that that was even brought up for um, allowing the kitchen to be used when they voted last month. They did want that to be put out there. Okay. It's it's on it. You can't put a sign on it or it can't be on our... The uh, doesn't really take the chance. We do have the ovens and they can use the ovens, but with the research oven, it's very expensive and it's very heavy. And it's kind of weird it's like I don't even have, I wouldn't even attempt to unplug it because I can't have it for it. The oven, that standard uh, kitchen, kitchen, kitchen oven, excuse me, that's in there isn't an appropriate enough or even large enough for me to cook my two meals. I have actual two ovens, uh, a griddle, and then four burners. But the two ovens themselves aren't in. I put in eight to nine trays of meals, and I only have four wraps. Um, they don't have to keep them. If they did want to be aware of that, I'm sure you guys, since you're not in the kitchen, we're in a little bit of just mm -hmm. And Mondo and Monica weren't aware of that either. And what did you call it? I didn't. It's three <coughs> three um, Okay. It's three pizza meals okay. for me. But I just thought you guys ought to know that for the actual kitchen portion, because I usually lock it and stay locked. But if that's used, that is an actual additional maintenance issue. As it is right now, they only come in three days, and we leave them off the floors in Chabula Center. And they put up for a basketball at the day early because that's what they're supposed to. Um, if they're not there every day, with the best of their staff. So it is additional maintenance cost for the city. Can we talk to Neil's on Reels about it? Mm -hmm. Because. Uh, I just think that we can talk to them and something can be arranged. We can, I know it's an expensive piece of equipment, but there's something that can be done. I don't think it has to be moved all the time. We're trying to figure out wraps or something without well, to get it. Uh, we can talk. We'll, we'll, take, we'll take a look at yeah, it. Yeah, we need to we'll talk about it. Right. Thanks, Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Carrie Ann. The other thing is we're not opening up the Shibola Center to every group for private parties. We're going to restrict right. it to local nonprofits. Mm -hmm. and. Our, our preference is, is to put people in Littleton if they do want the kitchen. People to use the chill wall if that's their preference. But, you know, if we limit the number to a couple times, whatever, do you decide on two or three times? And then uh, we, we direct as many as we can over to Littleton. I think the use at Chibola for their kitchen will be pretty limited. Any other discussion? Yeah, what? just one more. Okay. Sorry. No, that's okay. Um, I want to hear it now. Uh, uh, with the, the you know, for, for kitchens, they're to push them all the time over into Littleton, it, it, it isn't exactly right because of the logistics of how big Littleton is. Sometimes people want a smaller, um, so I hope that... Well, that's you know, going to push, and we'll just make sure they know that both are available to them. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they want to be in Chibola, they'll be able to. 
Okay, you're going to play nice. <laughs> we'll play nice, I promise. So that and it means that she, she's looking at only one at three. I'm willing to go with what you recommended two times. I'll go back down to the compromise for two times. Um, but other than that, I, I have no other objections. What about the 20? Except for that. You do accept the 20? No, I, I Don't do it. not accept the 20. Um, Is there any number that... Look on that. That you want to put on there or not? No, no, we don't. We can take that. We don't want to that out. Or that or that. Mm -hmm. so we can eliminate that and and go ahead and stick with the recommended two times per uh, uh, year for uh, nonprofit. Then then I could I could go with that. But uh, as it stands now with a a number, I, I can't I can't go with that. That would have to come back. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments before I ask on this? Is anyone prepared to uh, okay, I, make a motion? I, I will. With all their changes? There's only one change, actually, because we're going to keep the two when we're doing the six months. So the only thing that we'd want to have eliminated is the sentence, shall have a bona fide membership of at least 20 golf residents over the age of 18 years. We can just stop with filing of a rental request. Mm -hmm. And that and language would be included in the resolution. But I think we need one. Sure definition, definition of a non -profit. Right. We need to keep the uh, over 18 years <coughs> oh, as much as possible. Correct. Correct. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Maybe we need to uh, read the motion. Yeah. As right now. Before, yeah. We, like we kind of cut, cut it up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> what I got was um, you're adopting the resolution as amended, the lease requirement, and adding the local nonprofit definition. Limiting, limiting the number of free rentals to any one organization to two times per year. Maximum. Maximum. Right. Yeah, two times per year. Times. Okay. Over 18 years of age. That's part of it. Yeah, part of it. Well, I her mention that when she oh. read it back. There, I think. I don't know. Um, Councilman, I don't know if I understand the 18. Um, the way it was originally in there is it said to have a bona fide membership of 20 residents over the age of 18. So if you eliminate the number of members. I don't. I am not sure that I understand where the age of 18 limitation would. Uh, what I'm looking at is somebody is going to be responsible for that center. If we're going to have them sign a paper, right? They would have to be somebody over age of 18 years of age, correct? Yeah, that's that's already included actually in our other policy that okay. the rent okay. Okay. So I think that's, I think we're covered. That's why I wanted to make sure it was in there. I mean, that's the only reason I wanted okay. to see so. Oh wait, got another comment here. Go ahead. <laughs> I just asked if we had a motion. Did we have a motion? We did. God, I hope yeah. so. We did. Do you want red again? No. No. I'm prepared to do the second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make a motion. <laughs> Plus, there's any other. I think we're ready. <laughs> so we have the, the motion. I made the motion. She was the motion. And we motion. And we clarified to the 18, taking that out along with. Okay. Okay. So we have a first and a second. Is there any more question, comment? If not, I'll call for the vote. Vice Mayor Powers? Aye. Councilmember Singleton? Aye. Councilmember Shelton? Aye. Councilmember Cruz? Aye. Mayor Payne? Aye. Motion passed unanimously. Now we get down to the serious part. Finance Department, fiscal year 2012, second quarter update. Good evening, Mayor, Council, and community members. This evening I want to present a second quarter update for the fiscal year 2012. And the focus will continue to be on the general fund and cultural and recreation fund, but I will point out some um, major variances in some of the other funds. In the general fund, our revenues are just over $2.4 million as compared to the budget estimate of 7.5, so we're approximately 32% of the budget. Some of the major categories consist of property taxes, and that makes up 47% of the general fund. We received only one advance in the month of December, and Based on that advance, we estimate that our property taxes will actually come in at budget. We have estimated that revenues from the property taxes will be equal to the amount that we received in the last fiscal year, so we do expect that they will flatten out. We receive information on assessed values from the county assessor's office, and it looks like countywide that values have gone down about 3% or estimated fiscal year. But based on that advance, I think that we're going to come in right at budget. So we're um, hoping that that estimate still holds true. Other taxes are self-tax activity. There was positive growth there. We actually increased 7% as compared to the same quarter a year ago. And um, 
16% um, quarter to quarter. And the increase primarily related to fuel prices, but we have had some businesses that we have a larger period one of them is Brewster, so that was definitely positive news for the city as well. In the first two quarters, we saw an increase of sales tax over budget of $50,000, so we will be recommending a budget adjustment. We hope that over the next two quarters that we'll see additional increases, but at this point we do expect that at least $50,000 over the budget will be realized. <laughs> Um, in the intergovernmental, one of the things that we have seen already is we had a portion of our motor V is now in property taxes in lieu of, uh, is motor V in lieu of property taxes, and that now is shown under property taxes, but there is a component un under my vehicle that based on SB 89 was redirected to public safety, and so we still maintain that $100,000 for our, our fund 70. So that has been shifted away, so we will be making an adjustment. That was about $60,000 in the general fund that we will not be receiving in the current fiscal year. On the expenditure side, we are approximately 47% of budget, so that's definitely good news. We're under, we should be about 50%, less than 50%, so definitely good news. Two areas that I did want to bring to your attention, one of them was group insurance. We did um, not include the budget estimate for one of, um, for one employee in one department, so our um, expenditures are a little higher there. We will be including an adjustment during the midterm budget process. Additionally, in our engineering department, we are over on budget. We had a, um, a payout calculation to an employee, so they are over on the bed, so we'll be addressing that during the midterm. Other than that, all the other items, um, areas actually look like they're within the analyzed budget amount, so nothing that looks out of the ordinary. In the culture recreation fund, collections are right on. We're at 50% of budget. Primarily, um, though the primary area of revenues is the Galt market. On the expenditure side, we are just about 46% of the budget, so we're well within our 50%. Um, the area that I do want to bring to your attention was the Recreation Department. They are slightly over on the expenditure side, and that's primarily due to unemployment costs. We had some employees that are part-time employees, and when they're no longer working, they can file for unemployment costs. So that is a little bit higher, and we will be looking at that and monitoring that over the next two quarters. Um, a couple of other funds are gas tax transfer state, transportation funds. They, the revenues are low. Those um, amounts that we receive are based on claims that are submitted, and um, so we have not submitted some of them, or there is a film, so those are low in comparison to budget. Two of the big ones that have to do with transportation is we have an $8 million on measure ends, and we have an $8 million on RSTP, so we're waiting for some expenditures and um, the claims to be submitted in those two funds. Public safety, um, here again, positive news because of sales tax last quarter increased by 2%, and from a year ago, same quarter, we saw some increase in our sales activity, 4%. The good news is sales in Measure R is actually trailing at about percent of our sales to the general fund. We budgeted originally at 50%, so it's definitely positive. Two quarters, we saw that we have an adjustment of $33,000 over budget in the first two quarters. So again, we're hoping that these sales will continue over the next two quarters and we'll have a positive or a further positive adjustment by the time we get to the midterm budget process. Um, measure R on the expenditure side, we know that it, it's, um, we have six foreign officers budgeted, inclusive of one COPS grant funded position. There is one vacancy right now um, for the foreign officer, and there's also one dispatcher. Additionally, we have that in last month, council authorized a change in personnel, so we'll be shifting from one foreign officer to an additional dispatcher, but that wasn't reflected as of December, but I did want to bring that to council's attention. Um, as the as Rich, our public works director, advised us, we are a little ahead on our utilities, and that's because we do have three cycles in as of December, so that's good news. And the expenditure side are within the on, on, in all of our enterprise funds. And lastly, I wanted to report just on the redevelopment agency. We received the first advance. We think that revenues will come in, but on the expenditure side, we are now the successor agency, and um, so we are continuing to monitor. Um, information as we receive it. We will be presenting another EOP, ROPS at the next agenda meeting. We are trying to present information on the bonds. You see it's uh, one of the items that was presented this evening. So again, a lot of it is um, we're kind of reviewing things and on a daily basis. So we'll keep you informed as um, we receive the information. Other than that, I think all the other items are close to annualized amounts. No big surprises that we've seen that I have not mentioned this evening. So again, we will continue to keep council and the community apprised of the financial condition of the city of Galt. So if you have any questions, I'd be more than glad to try to address those this evening. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Do we have any questions from the council on this report? Other than no. well done? <laughs> yes, it's really easy to read, so thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks. And we especially appreciate the increases in 
That's <laughs> the revenues. <laughs> that was definitely a positive report for us this evening. Would you just keep that up, please? <laughs> I will do my best. Okay, I think we're ready to receive the report. No, it's information only. Oh, yeah. we don't need to vote on it? Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Next item. Next item under Finance Department as well, purchasing policy revisions. Good evening. This evening I am recommending that Council adopt a resolution accepting the revised uh, procurement procedures and basically superseding all prior actions regarding the contracting authority of the city manager and prior um, or subordinate personnel department heads. The actual purchasing policy, the last time we did a comprehensive review was back in 1997. And over the last couple of years, we brought a couple of changes. We made some changes to some contracting authorities to um, public works director. We actually did a local ordinance on preferences. Um, and we had a bunch of different ordinances. And what we are trying to do this evening is basically bring everything back into one policy. We wanted to address the policy so it's more user friendly. We also wanted to be sure that we're consistent with the code and the authority actually lies with the city manager as a purchasing officer and he can delegate to us as department heads, but we really wanted to get back and have the city manager as a contract and authority as opposed to us department heads. And then also one of the goals was that we wanted to have one document. We are constantly referring back to a resolution or another ordinance and we wanted to bring everything here. So hopefully this policy actually addresses all of three of those goals that we're trying to achieve this evening. Some of the major changes that you'll see in the policy include that council has, uh, they retain all of the um, contracting authority that, um, that um, unless it's otherwise specified in the policy. So everything still comes back to the council unless we've actually earmarked it as a city manager authority or department authority. Um, prior resolutions are now superseded, so they are no longer in existence. We saw some resolutions where we had some department heads that had contracting authority for up to $175,000 or change order authority of $75,000. So this basically supersedes that, and we've now spelled out what the contracting authority is and those thresholds are for the city manager, department heads, and or council. Um, the city manager's contract authority has now been established at $30,000 for contracting except for public projects, and that was increased from $20,000 in the prior policy. The city manager's contract and authority for public projects is tied to the Uniform Public Construction Cost Accounting Act, which we did um, opt to be a member of, and that currently is $175,000 for informal public projects, that threshold amount. So the city manager now has contracting authority for that, as opposed to a department head, the city manager has that. He can delegate this, but now he is actually the purchasing officer. Contracting for goods and services above $30,000 is done pursuant to still bids. The amounts between $10,000 and $30,000 are now pursuant to written quotes. And between $2,000 and $10,000, we can use um, oral or written quotes. Contracting for professional services, such as engineering services, above $30,000 is required to be done by our fee request for proposals. Between $10,000 and $30,000 written quotes are required. And between two and $10,000 oral and or written quotes are required. And uh, it's 10 percent contingency is automatically authorized for all public projects. If uh, a project comes forward and they want to make a change, we can certainly look at that and council can have some discretion there, but automatically we'll go with the 10 percent. So those are the major changes in the policy. If there's any questions, um, I'd be more than glad to try to address those. An option is basically leaving the policy that we adopted back in 1997. We know that some of those dollar amounts have now should be increased, but um, we are recommending the thresholds be as presented this evening. So if you have any questions, I'd be more than glad to try to address it this evening. Questions? Would you like to read the, I'm sorry, city manager? I, I just wanted to thank uh, the finance director and the city attorney who worked very hard on this policy as well as the, uh, the rest of the staff and making comments. And it was a big effort. We've been working on it for many, many months. So appreciate and acknowledge their efforts in doing that. Well, and it sounds like it was a, an improvement that needed to happen in the policy. I think all staff are going to benefit having everything together in one policy. I think it's much easier and clearer to read and follow. So it'll make sure we're, we're doing things uh, properly. We've also included a section on definition. So if someone wants to know what the definition of a public project is, they can go straight to the definition section. Is it, and what are those thresholds? In the very back, we have a quick reference. So if you just know you want to buy a good and you know it's $3,000, you can just go to this little template and say, oh, OK, I need to do a written quote, or I need to issue a purchase order. So it's kind of a quick reference a tool that we hope that will be handy for all departments. Is that online? Is that information online? Uh, it will be once we actually have this. It will be. Okay. I think the council appreciates the hard work of both the city attorney and the finance director. So we have a resolution. Would you 
like to read the resolution again? Adopt the resolution or, the or adopt the resolution adopting the revised procurement procedures and superseding all prior <laughs> resolutions granting contracting authority to the city manager or subordinate city officials or employees. Move to accept the recommendation. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a first and a second. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Powers? Aye. Councilmember Singleton? Aye. Councilmember Shelton? Aye. Councilmember Cruz? Aye. Mayor Payne? Uh, aye. Motion passed unanimously. Thank you. Item. Thank, Thank you, you, Steve. Next item under the Human Resources Department changes the City of Halt personnel manual, job descriptions, and salary schedule relating to part time and temporary positions. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. The report before you tonight is the result of a close review of the City's staff of non-full-time positions. In this process, it was determined that there was clarification needed um, to distinguish positions that are part-time and temporary, so one of the recommendations is a change wording in the personnel manual. It was also discovered several job titles were being used for positions with similar levels of um, responsibility and pay, so staff is recommending that we group um, several of these positions um, together in a a couple of job descriptions that are being proposed tonight. The last proposal is for employees assigned to work in designated part-time positions that they have, um, they'll be given um, the opportunity to earn paid time off, which is known as, as PTO. So if approved tonight, the personnel manual will basically clarify that a part-time position is one that is scheduled on a regular basis that works at least 20 hours per week and um, it will be a position similar to full-time in that it needs to be approved by City Council and um, put in our budget process so it's accounted for in that way. And um, Brittany, we have a recommendation to positions in the market for recreation and three in parks um, if it is approved tonight and there may be other positions requested as we go along, you know, maybe in the budget process or somewhere uh, down the road if the department um, finally had that need. Um, a temporary employee will be clearly defined as someone um, working in a position that is less than 940 hours per year and will, um, you know, could be based on a, a seasonal need or a project uh, driven need, but they will definitely work uh, less than the 940 hours and those individuals would not be eligible for the paid time off. Um, the next component of the project was um, to commence the job titles, as I mentioned earlier. We had a variety of job titles for our part-time and temporary employees and we were looking at them closely. They, they were really um, more entry level um, and the job titles we have, some of them we haven't used for years. Other ones, they're very similar were in um, responsibility and pay. So we are making the uh, titles and the job descriptions a little more generic. So that would reduce the number of um, position titles to approximately 18 when we started at um, 33. The final component is providing paid time off for part-time employees. So again, as I mentioned, the individuals that will be placed in the part-time positions will begin earning the paid time off. So that is that for vacation or sick leave. And there is an accrual um, schedule that is listed in the report will be placed in the personnel manual. And if approved, all of the changes um, recommended tonight will go into effect March 26th and any individual that would begin um, accruing PTO, their first accrual would show up on their April 1st paycheck. Um, that's how we, you know, on our pay stubs, that's when you see if you have vacation sick leave. So the part-time employees would see how many hours they had accrued. And the accrual is based on the number of hours that they worked in the prior um, two-week work period. So. Um, the last item I wanted to just go over is the salary schedule and looking at it and trying to make it consistent with our full-time employees. Um, before part-time temporary employees were on a different salary um, matrix and they only had four steps, we've taken um, these positions and job titles and placed them in the matrix that we use for full-time employees. So there's a five-step process and, and they're very we tried to make the, make the ranges very similar to what the employees are being paid now, but they're 
there could be some slight increases just because they weren't going to fit exactly into um, the new matrix. But according to um, the departments that are being affected by these changes, the cost is um, nominal and it can be absorbed in the current budget. So they don't see that there would be a need for additional appropriation of funds. So that kind of covers the highlights of the recommendation and the staff report. I'm happy to answer any questions. Questions or comments? I have comments. This is something I've been talking with Jason about for a very long time. I'm just so happy about this. I think that everybody that works for our city gets recognition. And when people have been working with for us for five years, if you want to call it as a temporary or whatever, I think they should be entitled to some time off. And I'm so happy that you guys did this. And I'm hoping that uh, when we get more funding down the road, maybe we can look at giving them some other kind of benefits also. But I'm really pleased with you guys. You did a great job. And I know there's going to be a lot of happy um, staff out there. And I, I think it was a great thing. Yes, I think it's going to be um, a really good for our employees, like you said. And I think that Carrie Ann tonight is a perfect example of our committed and dedicated part-time and temporary employees. Unfortunately, we won't be able to offer the PTO for the temporaries that you know, haven't met that threshold. But like you said, it's a good start in really recognize our um, employees that are committed even to the city, even though they're not full-time employees. Okay. Good job. Good. Okay. Any other comments? Uh, Councilman well, Singleton. Well, I can't let me go by without making a comment. <laughs> uh, I've got to agree with uh, Councilman Howard. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. I, just, I thought he had something to one that. Uh, what a great job. And you, Paula, uh, thank you so much for instilling us into uh, our, uh, our program and our temporary. Uh, I just wanted to make it clear to the public. Uh, when you say that we are uh, our uh, total part-time and temporary job, it's just titles are going down from 33 to 18. We are not getting rid of those positions, correct? So we are not laying anybody off. I just want to make sure the public understands we are not laying people off. Through this program, no. There would be, um, I, of course, temporaries that reach the threshold of the 940. They do sometimes leave during the fiscal year and, and possibly okay. come back. Okay. But no, um, and this will really, if anybody's salary is affected, it will be, an increase, again, a slight increase, and no one will um, really have an effect that's a reduction in pay. Okay. And I do, um, Richard Prima did bring up a, a suggestion about the clerical public works that we didn't address, so I, that's not in the staff report tonight. Did you want to, should I make a change to that, or I don't mean to put you on the spot, but... I think we just, we'll just address that separately. Okay. So I think, needless to say, we are going to, um, you know, probably through the budget process, there may be a couple of other um, suggested part-time positions because the departments recognize a need for them. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. That's all I have. Okay. Anybody else? Councilman Curran, Shelton. I just had one question. If we make a motion here, City uh, Attorney, we have three parts to it. We just make one motion for all three. Um, it seems like every, there's a consensus. So I think we're fine doing a one motion on all three resolutions. So there are three resolutions before you. Okay. Uh, adopt a resolution approving the changes to the Gulf Personnel Manual. Adopt a resolution approving job descriptions for the positions of Parks Worker 1-2, Recreation Worker 1-2, and Project Management Specialist. And adopt a resolution approving the salary schedule for part-time and temporary employees. Okay, so moved. Okay, we have a second. motion and a second. I'll second. We have two seconds. Roll call vote, oh, please. Sorry, Randy, I didn't hear you. Sorry. Councilman Powers. Aye. Councilman Singleton. Aye. Councilman Shelton. Aye. Councilman Cruz. Aye. Mayor Payne. Aye. Uh, motion is passed unanimously, and About with our that. thanks. Next item, please. A public Works Department Award of Wastewater Treatment Plant Facilities Master Plan Master Task Order Agreement to West Coast Associates. Madam Mayor, members of the Council, this is a, an overdue project. Um, the, the city issued requests for proposals uh, in 2010 to uh, three engineering firms who have worked for the city on various waterway wastewater capacities in the last few years to do the, the really the long-range facilities plan for the wastewater treatment plant. And uh, it has a couple of purposes uh, for just looking at long-range. 
in accordance with the new general plan and what it's going to take to um, a facility uh, in the future so we can actually do our impact piece, um, which is an important element we need to do. Um, but perhaps more importantly is the there's a short-term aspect to it as well. I mentioned a few minutes ago in a presentation on rates that we're under this time schedule order and we have to make modifications to the secondary plant to, to meet those requirements. It's nothing to do with the tertiary. This is now the, the, the old secondary plant. And as I mentioned, that's going to be in the ballpark of a $6 million project. And we want to make sure that what we do there is, is compatible with what the long-range plan is going to be. That's the whole point of having a long-range plan. Um, it's unfortunate we didn't have a long-range plan years ago, but that's okay. Here we are now. So um, we issued that request for proposals, and for some reason it didn't get acted on. Um, it was one of the things that uh, we needed to move on very quickly. When I arrived a few months ago, and unfortunately fairly quickly means three months, but here we are. Um, uh, staff reviewed the proposals uh, we received. Uh, because of the time lag and knowing more things about what we know now versus what we did when the RFP was issued over, um, we wound up <coughs> looking at this from the standpoint of who's best qualified to do the work and let's work with them to modify the scope of work to really meet what we need to do now. Um, so we didn't get into a lot of discussion about what each proposal said because what we asked for then is a bit different than what we need to do now. So. Uh, uh, that, that's why the staff report doesn't really cover all that background. The uh, team recommends associates be selected to do this work. The uh, uh, tasks uh, identified as to what needs to be done to really do the issues I just described to you. We also asked for a couple of other things that we need to consider, and I would direct you to the staff report on. Um, some of the optional items that we, we are not recommending at this point but we may want to consider, which is why we are asking for, for a, a task order agreement so that we can come back um, without having to redo the whole process and having a new agreement but issue another task to do some of these items should we so select. Um, the actual the impact fees, uh, this is something that's typically done with a, an engineering firm in conjunction with a financial firm. Um, they did give us a quote for that we're of $28,000. We're suggesting we wait on that, but I wanted to you know, point it out to you that you may see that in the near future. Um, another task is the operations and maintenance manual um, for the overall plant. Um, and it's something that I, I am surprised you don't have more of that already in place, but it really needs to be done. I mean, obviously they have some of their own procedures in place, but to really have a comprehensive manual that's done under today's standards is something we don't have. Um, we asked for that. Um, it was um, actually more money than thought it <laughs> we wanted to spend on it, quite frankly. So we want to look at that a little harder, but you may see that come back in the near future. Um, some other optional tasks, particularly the one that I, I wanted to point out, is to actually get started on design documents for the near future <laughs> improvements to meet the permit. I really think we're going to wind up having to do that um, before we actually finish the facilities plan in order to meet the schedule that's in our permit. So I wanted to give you a heads up that that's you know, probably going to come back to you. Um, the rest of the items that are in the scope of work, um, you know, I'm not going to go through them because they're all those technical things. Um, but I will call to one of them, the last task number I, which is to uh, administer the EPA grants that will be, will be used, well, at least one of the EPA grants that will be used towards this, um, this effort. We received an earmark. Um, 2009, I think it was, and um, it, that has a, like a 50% match requirement, and the EPA takes a percentage of it off the top, so it's the grant is not enough to do the entire project, but if we add the second grant to it, we have <laughs> more money than what we need for this, so we're, we're, we're looking at having Westios help us administer the grants um, so we can maximize their use. We may come back with a different project for the second grant or we may want to roll it into this if we add the design work. We don't know yet. But one of the things I've been concerned about is because of the turnover in staff that we've had, which is going to continue as we find permanent replacements um, over the next six, eight months, that uh, we'll have another set of you know, new, new people involved, and that's when things fall through the cracks. And so you don't want to mess up your grant administration, so we've asked that maybe they take that on as well. Uh, so that's the item that was not in the original original uh, scope of work that I've mentioned. 
Um, Rivera Skills can do a fine job. They did an excellent job on the tertiary facility. Looking at the, the amount of that project, it was what, $16 million, and we had $100,000 in change orders, and that's, that's, that's a, an excellent track record that you want to continue with. So um, uh, that's our staff report. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Questions? Okay. Can we take these in uh, two, in one, can we adopt in one, or does it need to be taken individually? No, you can uh, do it in one motion. Do me to read it? Please. It's actually, uh, I mean, there's separate recommendations, but it's actually uh, all folded into uh, one, resolution. one resolution. So I, I'd recommend that the uh, action be to adopt the resolution authorizing city manager to execute a master task order agreement with West Associates for wastewater treatment plant facilities and uh, further approve task order number one in the amount of $693,019 and uh, further authorize uh, special appropriation of $350,958 from wastewater fund zero to the uh, Wastewater Treatment Plant uh, Facilities Plant Project, CIP 50C, and the account numbers in the resolution. Okay. And we'll accept the recommendation. We have a motion. Is there a second? Okay, I'll second the motion. <laughs> have a first and a second. Are there any uh, questions or <coughs> concerns? Well, I have to ask one. Uh, Finance, what does that do to our budget. I'm sorry. That's a lot of money. <laughs> Smile again. <laughs> um, there are funds. There's, there is a transfer form in here that we will do a, a temporary um, internal transfer of the amount of, I believe it was $186,000. There is insufficient amounts <coughs> in the capital fund. So there are funds in the wastewater operating fund. So there is a temporary looking at some other sources during the budget process. So we feel confident this amount will be repaid in a very short time period, but again, we just wanted to have that cash flow, so I think we're fine. Thank you very much. Okay, we. If have I may, I'm sorry. There is two things I mentioned that I should have or should have mentioned. That uh, one was we are also going to look at how much of this project we could fund from impact fees. The original budget uh, allocation for this project was about 50/50. Um, I think it could be much higher, but that needs needs a little bit of work to do it. I didn't want to wait on everything else just to do that. Uh, so that will help in the long run. I also want to introduce Jeff Pels from uh, West Hills, in case you haven't met him before. Oh, welcome. Uh, he'll be the project right. manager uh, on the project. So you have a face now to go with it. Mm -hmm. Do you have any comments <coughs> that you'd want to make? Or? No, we're um, pleased to be working with the city again, and uh, continue working with the city, and uh, I'm with enjoying public work. Okay. All right, thank you. Well, we do have a motion, and I would call for the vote. Vice Mayor Power? Aye. Councilmember Singleton? Aye. Councilmember Shelton? Aye. Councilmember Cruz? Aye. Mayor Payne? Aye. And motion is passed unanimously. Next item, please. Communications. communications. I don't have any. Does anybody have any communications, any written communications they want to share with the rest of us? If not? You mean by council members or staff? Council members or staff. Sir. Why? I'm, I'm just trying to make sure we're at the right area where someone to bring up something uh, that one of our citizens had uh, brought to us earlier today. Okay, I, I think you'll you'll be able to bring that up under your comments. Yeah, my comments. Sorry. Okay, then uh, the clerk's report. Oh. I can't oh, take this. Yeah, I'm going to defer to the city manager. I can't tell you a little more about the task force. <clears throat> uh, as you know, the city has been working very closely with the Chamber of Commerce on a number of economic development efforts, the Shop Local Group, and a number of other things we've worked closely on with them. Uh, one of the things we've discussed recently is forming an economic development task force. Um, chambers moving forward with forming the task force. Uh, they had a board meeting recently, and they designated certain members of theirs to participate on this. They also asked if the city would be interested in appointing two council members to participate on that uh, committee. I don't have a whole lot of details as far as um, how often they would be meeting, but their initial indications that it would be a monthly monthly meeting. Um, so I asked the council if there was interest in appointing 
two council members to that committee. What? Excuse me. Um, what's the purpose of it? Just to work no. together with the. So, from my again, this is a chamber um, designated committee. My understanding in talking with chamber members is they are interested in being more active in uh, helping to uh, helping existing businesses as well as recruiting businesses to come into our community. So it would be a lot of um, strategies, uh, coming up with plans, and taking a look at what we need in order to be more competitive when it comes to economic development um, and those kinds of things. It's, if I could just add, it's something that the elected officials in the chamber, when we were working together very closely, I know and can tell you that in 2002 and up to about 2006, it was always something that we had talked about doing for some whatever, just different reasons that never did quite get together. No. So it's been going on for in talking for a long time. I think it'll be good for the community. Okay, I would like to volunteer since I'm in the middle of it with uh, Shop Local, and then I would ask if there's anybody else. That I would also like to be part of the kind of dovetails right in the Shop Local. Okay, that if the council has no objections. Very. <laughs> what do you say? We need a motion. So, is there a motion to I'll make, a, I'll make a motion that the mayor and the, and councilman Mark Cruz volunteer their time. I'll say. Thank you, Councilman <laughs> Shelton. Sure. Councilman Singleton. Okay, we have a motion. Is we have a vote? Um, Vice Mayor Powers. Aye. Councilman Singleton. Aye. Councilman Shelton. Aye. Councilman Cruz. All right. Mayor Payne. Aye. And then I have a few reminders. Congrats. That motion was passed unanimously. It's your turn. I was actually about to tell you we forgot to read development agency, but that was <laughs> that's my problem. Somebody else took care of that. That was course. a nice yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. We need no more. Well, there is a redevelopment Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> just a few reminders. For February 8th, there's a Parks and Rec Commission meeting at 7 p.m. here in the Council Chambers. The Planning Commission meeting that was scheduled for February 9th. Are you sure that Parks and Rec meeting wasn't changed? You Not say that I was notified of You say it's the 8th? Well, we can, we can verify it because I was asked to make a presentation the following week. Oh, but we'll get that cleared up. Go ahead. I will definitely clear that up. Um, and check our website. We'll post that tomorrow, first thing. Um, the planning commission that was scheduled for February 9th has been canceled. Uh, city offices will be closed on Monday, February 20th in honor of President's Day. And that takes us to our next meeting of February 21st here in the council chambers. Thank you. Thank you. Um, comments by staff? Okay. Uh, comments by city council? And I know Councilman Singleton wants to share something. No, I gotta. I need to think because it's been three weeks. So <laughs> sorry to say that, but it's a while. Well, some of us have to do that. I have to do that all the time. Um, the one thing I want to bring up: we had a uh, we had a citizen earlier uh, bring it to our attention that there's some problems out of Gulch uh, uh, by Griffey and uh, Amber Gale Way and West Elk Hills Drive uh, with some BMX bikes and some ATVs and uh, motorcycles in this area and causing dust. Going through trespassing signs, knocking down fences, taking down the trespassing signs. Uh, and I don't, I'm, our chief was uh, made aware of it. I don't know when, how, how long ago that was. Uh, and uh, they sent us pictures, and I would like to, I'm hoping that we can get together with staff and the police chief and try to remedy this problem uh, with the trespassers. And I know we've had issues with uh, some of these motorcycles and uh, uh, going through uh, and running from our PD officers using railroad tracks uh, over in that general area. Um, I would ask... Uh, well, I can ask you, you know, in, off the record, about this issue. One thing we have over there is we have a pipe that's in the ground, and uh, this is a hazard I see for children in the area. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that our 
city manager and, and attorney will get a letter to whoever's responsible for that, and we'll, we'll try to get that taken care of. So uh, the citizen that brought this forth earlier, I'd like to bring the We will be working diligently on this to try to get this uh, figured out the best we can, and I know our police chief will, will do the best in his power to do what he can with that. Did the chief want to make a comment? Right, we actually received a uh, copy of the email, I think, the same time you did. Mm -hmm. um, I actually walked the area with the uh, patrol commander today looking at the problem. We've contacted Elliott Homes to see about uh, putting our fence up. Uh, we have to find out, in fact, whose property it is uh, on the other side of a culvert that runs underneath that road. We found some uh, more gems being built, and that is city property. So we'll be talking to public works to take care of that. We've already contacted the gentleman who was here today, both the time that we responded and also today. And we're planning on meeting with the neighborhood to the neighborhood watch and also contacting the um, family members as far as parents of some of the kids that were out there and try to address it. One of our biggest problems is there's trespass, but we have to get permission from the people who own the property before we can actually take action. But we're actually working on it, and hopefully we'll have some kind of resolution shortly. Thank you, Chief. Okay. okay um, I want to ask the rest of the council if we can bring back the staff about the parking for the seniors on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. I think that that's really important. And since the solution looks like it's already been made, if we could get cats to just block off that area from, what was the time, Terry? From 8 to 11.30, if we could work on that. We need to look at other options. Um, one of our, our biggest concerns is taking away market parking. As you know, uh, market is a huge revenue source for the city, and we don't have money to run our operations, there would be no senior program. And so we certainly don't want to sacrifice one program for another. No, I'm just I'm just so saying. So if you block out spots that the market right. event users can't use, then that's that's the concern. Um, but I'm saying I've, we've got some other ideas. That was one suggestion. Okay. We've got three or four options we can look at. Good. And so we'll come back with the council with some recommendations and some options right. to address Good. the problem. It'll come back in two weeks, I think, is what he's saying. And that's what you were asking. YouTuber. Yeah, and that's what you were asking yeah, for, too. I just want some kind of yeah. solution. I don't know if it will come back in, in two weeks. Um, I, I want to talk to the uh, school district, the fair site, which is right next door. There may be some opportunities there. Mm -hmm. There's different things we need to look at. Mm -hmm. But we'll bring it back as soon as we have some options and some recommendations. Great. Great. Okay, was there something else? Anything happen in the last three weeks? I can't remember. Is that it? That's it. Okay, Councilman Shelton. I just want everybody to enjoy the rain while it's here, and uh, have a great week. Councilman Cruz. Actually, Council Member Powers took the words out of my mouth. I kind of feel the same way as far as the seniors, and we need to work on it as quickly as we can. If we can work with the school district on their parking lots, that'd be great. Um, I would just wish everybody a happy, happy Valentine's Day, which I thought I dressed appropriately. <laughs> and uh, you did. If there are no other, if there's no other business, I will adjourn the meeting. <laughs> At ten to nine. Oh, I